Are there any children amongst us on, the, on this morning? Amen. We had a puppet show on yesterday and some of the kids from the community participated in it. And um, it was wonderful. I signed up for Instagram the other day and I caught the whole thing on camera. <laughs> I hope and pray I can post it effectively and write, right? Amen. Here you go. Y'all can sit down. I'm going to sit down with you. Because I'm going to have to get back up and help <laughs> All right. Probably one of the greatest gifts that God gives to us are our children. Amen? Amen. And what they give back to us is that they teach us and remind us of the innocence we once had. Right? Right? And so every time, and I, I'm always making sure we never forget. Every time, look at, look, at, look at man right here. Every time we look into the faces of our children, my prayer is for you that it is a reminder of how things used to be. Huh? How innocent you were before some of us became bitter, how happy we were. Before some of us became sad, how joyous we were, how free we were. Before we began to take on all the pressures of the world, we were children. Look at them. They could care less what I'm talking about. <laughs> but that's the glory of who they and how they are. Their minds are always everywhere at the same time. Amen? Amen. But they absorb also their environment. Now, if we want to grow our ministry for children, we must remind ourselves of how we used to be when we had the energy, the time, and when we gave up our talent, right? Before we got distracted in paying bills, going to work every day, and doing all other things. Uh-oh, am I talking too loud for you? All right. Right. There you go. <laughs> so what I want to remind us is that we have our work before us, right? right? And we've got to let go of the distractions that we tend to take on uh -uh. <laughs> and be considerate and thoughtful of the work that God is giving us to do for our children. Now I'm going to bring this to a close. It's simple language. How many of you want to build our children's ministry? <laughs> then do the work. Do the work that it takes. How many of you all want to children? Look at you. Look at me now. How many of you all want to be a part of a, a children's ministry here? Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> We got a few. That's all right. We got a few. Let's start with a few. And, and, and Mang Mang right here raised his hand too. All right. So in closing, because I saw great possibilities on yesterday. If you want it, then let's work towards it. Because they are depending on your desire to give them the best you have to give. Right? And these are... It, they're no more looking all on the outside about blaming nobody else for our children. These are our children. Right? 
each and every one of us. So if we want them to have a, a wonderful experience, then we are to provide for them. Let's bless God for them. Amen. God, we thank you and we praise you for these wonderful children. They are going to grow up to be all kinds of individuals that will lead us into the future. We thank you and praise you that we have the opportunity to serve in a ministry that will build upon things that they're learning. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you give us the wherewithal to be the kind of, uh, of adults you would have us to be in their lives. So Jesus Christ, we pray. And the people of God say amen. And amen. Give the Lord a hand, praise for our people. I must admit, this morning I got all kinds of things going on, right? My phone ain't going off. I'm dropping books. And... So y'all just keep me in prayer, right? Because I got one more worship to go through. And I hope and pray that I don't tear down anything. Our scripture on the, this morning comes from 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verses 4 through 14. All right? Sec Am I not right? Second Timothy. Eleven, I'm sorry. Eleven through fourteen. Thank you. Mm. Second Timothy chapter one, eleven through fourteen. There you go. For this gospel, I've appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust. And I am sure that he is able to guard until the day that I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ that's, that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted in you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. It is um, World Communion Day, and one of the things that uh, every communion back home, we always did this song, and it's a testimony. Well, it is my testimony anyway. It's simply the blood will never lose its power. Amen? Amen. How many of you believe that blood would never lose its power? Now, it is Communion Sunday. All the shows are over. Everybody is to participate. You can find this on page 256. 256. Amen. Every 
heart who knows this. Let's sing. Mm-hmm. The blood that Jesus shed for me. It was way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day. It soothes my doubts. It soothes my doubts. And it calms all of my fears. And it drives. From day, from day to day, it will never, it will never lose. It won't lose its its power. Oh, come on, y'all! You know it reaches, it reaches. To the heart, yes, mountain, yes, thank you, Lord, yeah. You know that it belongs to the Lord, to the lowest valley, yeah. yes, it does. I
they won't lose its power. Amen. 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 Reverend Amen. Kenneth Thanks. Scott Man King. Amen. <laughs> Give praise uh, for just being able to be in the house of worship one more time and to be in the presence of the people of God one more time on this World Communion Sunday. If you would join me in a moment of prayer. Lord, we come to you and we ask that you just open our hearts and mind to receive and perceive what you may be saying to us in this time in which we stand, these moments in which we live. Remind us of your word, Lord, how we might appropriate it and how we might live with it. But most of all, Lord, just continue to be the potter, for we are the clay, molding and shaping us as you would have us to be, until we're perfectly fitted for your kingdom and able to call ourselves disciples of Jesus the Christ. And as we come to this teaching moment, Lord, you hone it, you shape it, you develop it. You send it forth as you see fit, allow it to all be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I want to take a few moments and speak on the subjects. We go through what we go through. We go through what we go through. This summer, my computer crashed. And, and, and I needed to get new software was the final diagnosis. So they uploaded Microsoft 365. And so that was there, and I was writing my sermon, eight good pages of sermon material, Plenty of references and citations. Formatted, page numbered, you name it. I saved it once. I saved it twice. As I was working on it, it was feeling good, so I saved it a third time. Got to the end, I saved it again. Powered it down, decided I was going to come back and do some revisions, and it wasn't there. (laughs) We go through what we go through. You know, so in a sense of not being there, brought to light and brought to life that sermon title. We go through what we go through. There's nothing that we can do about it sometimes. We go through what we go through. I went and looked in the temporary folder. It wasn't there. We go through what we go through. We find out from time to time. We go through illnesses. We don't have any control over it. We go through sometimes a down spiral in terms of money and finances, and sometimes we find we ain't got much control over it. We we, we have to deal with our livelihood and sometimes we don't feel that we got much control over that as well. You drive a new car, car break down, you ain't got no control over that, but you got to pay the bill. We go through what we go through. Now I raise this because if you look at this letter closely, it is simply a declaration in this letter that we go through what we're going to have to go through. There's, there's, there's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes, most of the times, you just got to face it. Most of the times, you just got to deal with it. Most of the times, you got to just struggle not to lose your faith and your hopefulness as you deal with what you have to deal with. And so if you look at this letter closely, this letter sits in the moment of uncertainty and with certainty Look to God. This letter is a definition of this. Now, this letter wasn't written by Paul, was not written by Paul. Don't get all bent out of shape. It seems to have been written by somebody else. And it also seems to differ 
from 1 Timothy and Titus, which was also not written by Paul. And, but this one appears to be from a different hand than even 1 Timothy and Titus. That, and, and the reason we know or feel that it's from a different hand is because the vocabulary is different, the style is different, and in these letters it deals with stuff that Paul never dealt with when he was living, such as the structure and the hierarchy of the church or the officers, or the leaders in the church. It doesn't deal with any of that in the material that we know to be Paul's authentic material. So who could the writer be? Well, the writer could be a, a follower of Paul, sympathetic to the theology of Paul, the spirit of Paul. The, the writer could be someone who is, who is in love with the theological and uh, expression of Paul and the historical uh, 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 chronology of Paul, but it also can be some, from someone who was acting as a secretary at the moment of Paul's incarceration. Oh, yeah. But on any account, this letter attempts to focus us in perspective into the final days of Paul's life. And as you read in this text, Paul is there and he is drained, he is feeling deserted, he is feeling alone, and yet he is holding forth in the faith in spite of all that is going on around him. He is lamenting where he is and what is going on, and he's facing the uncertainty of the future with a kind of certainty that is found in faith. Now you know sometimes when we go through difficult times, we have that tendency to look back at when the times were not so difficult and to wish that we could go back in time, go back to that time where we really experienced the joys and the happiness and the, and, and the hopefulness, or to go back in time when we didn't have to worry about all the stuff that we are worrying about right now, to go back in time and somehow touch that moment when life was more carefree and seemed to have been more victorious. We sit there and we reflect on just how far we've come, and sometimes we wonder, how did we end up in this place that we ended up since we had so much going for us back then? Well, sisters and brothers, I got news for you. Just stick around a little bit, and you're going to have to go through what you're going to go through. Just stick around a little bit, and, and, and all that seems to be triumphant and joyous right now is going to be a struggle later on. But that doesn't mean it's always going to remain a struggle, but it's a matter of understanding that we get to that place where we just simply have to deal with what we have to deal with, no matter how strong you are, how smart you are, how powerful you are, how cunning you are, how scheming you are, you can't change the reality. You just got to go through what you got to go through. And, and I lift that text up because here is Paul at this moment feeling that Folk have deserted him. Folk have left him. He says all of Asia is gone. He named some folks by name who deserted him and opposed him because all of a sudden he was in chains. All of a sudden he was in jail. All of a sudden people became ashamed of who he had become and what he was. Well, as long as he was out there walking around free, folk said, oh, there is just glory in this and there's no burden. But the moment there became any burden in it, folks said, we ain't with you no longer. Oh, yeah. And so Paul is there wishing that he could connect with his old friend, his mentor, his mentee, his compatriot in the ministry, Timothy. He's at the end. And let me give you a little history about this, is that the Rome catches fire in 64 of the common era. It burns. Nero is, Nero is emperor. Nero don't want the fingers to point at him. 
So he tells everybody, Rome caught a fire because of that terrorist organization that follows that Jesus. Rome caught a fire because of those illegals. Hear me now. Those illegals that call themselves followers of the way that set fire to burn down our way of life. They, 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 they are the troublemakers, the destabilizers of the empire, the ones who threaten the peace of Rome. And therefore, it seems that Paul ended up being martyred around that time, right after the fire. And not only Paul, but Peter, also martyred in Rome shortly after that fire. That's to give you the context of, 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 of this letter. Here he sits feeling doomed, feeling alone, feeling sorry, feeling pitiful for himself, feeling all of the emotional roller coasters because he doesn't fully know what's coming, but it doesn't look good, and sometimes you just got to go through what you go through. Now, he wished for Timothy to come. Why? Why? Because as he clearly points out in this letter, I, 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 I knew your grandmother. I, I knew your grandmother. I, I knew your mother. And I know how deep they were in the faith. We find in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2 through 5, these words, To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with clear conscience as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and now... I am sure lives in you. He, 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 he needed, he was reaching out from that moment of despair, from that moment of loneliness, from that moment of pain. I, I, I've been through some illnesses over the summer, into the fall. Some of y'all know the story. My, my legs weren't working right. I couldn't stand, couldn't sit down, couldn't lay down. Right? It was just in severe pain, and, and I went through physical therapy all summer long, and just as I was getting through physical therapy, Sister Tucker, then I got hit with an upper respiratory something or another. I was walking around gagging, and <laughs> right? they couldn't talk. That's a hard thing for me, to not be able to talk. Right? Uh, not to mention the first thing, not to be able to walk and run and run around and rip and do all that other type of stuff. But, but it was a whammy and a, another whammy. And, 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 and I'll confess, me, I go into hiding. I don't want nobody to know what I'm going through. I don't want anybody to know what pain is painting me and how deep it is painting me. You know, I had a dog named Rex. And Rex grew up with me. And I knew something was wrong with Rex because Rex would disappear under the bed in a closet or something when Rex wasn't feeling well. I'm a little bit like Rex. You know, I, I'll, I'll run away and hide. And maybe it's because I, I, I've conditioned myself to try to be so strong for everybody that I dare not want anybody to see me in a weakened and broken down condition. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But then you know when you go through what you go through, when you go through pain, when you go through a feeling that you have no power or control over what's to come next, uh, 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 you sit there sometime in your despair and in your aloneness like I was trying to be there in my despair and aloneness and it has an effect upon you emotionally, it has an effect upon you spiritually, it has an effect upon you psychologically. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But then on the other side, a group of folk from Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ wouldn't leave me alone. 
kept sending up prayers and letting me know that you were praying for me and telling me I better slow down and take care of myself and really in a sense getting on my last nerve telling me about myself that I knew y'all were right that's why I got on my last nerve but I know that 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 you did not let me go and you did not let me down and you prayed for me all along the way and brought little gifts of cough drops and this and stuff to take care of my knee and my leg and all of those things. And I realized at that point why Paul was reaching towards Timothy. Reaching towards Timothy because he needed that lifeline. He was alone. He needed that connection. You see, we all need a connection of community. We all need the connection of community that is rooted in love and prayer. We all need that place where we are loved and we can offer love. We all need that place, particularly when we go through what we're going through. We need to know that folk are there. The other thing that is illuminated in this scripture is that we need to know that love is manifest and that prayers are going up. It's prayers that carry us from day to day, from moment to moment, from lows to highs. It's prayers that bring us through the most difficult of circumstances when we're going through what we're going. So I give thanks to God for community and prayers and people and love. And let us remember that we're reminded of a love that builds community, that holds community together, that binds community together, sister and brother does well. It's love. It's love that comes from above that helps us get through what we go through. It's love that comes from above, that plants itself in the hearts of those who are faithful believers to share that love with the world, to share that love with the community, to build up a community through love. The love is the love that binds the community together and causes us to act selflessly for one another and to love one another with a love that we've learned from above. The teachings of 1 John Chapter 4, verse 17 to 19 says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness for that day of judgment. Boldness for that day of judgment. Boldness for that day of having to go through what we go through. Boldness in that day when we sit down in the doctor's office. Boldness on that day when we're trying to deal with our finances. Boldness on that day when we're facing the worries of our lives. A boldness, and that boldness means that we are believing in the trustworthiness of God. So we have a boldness on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world, it says. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. You see, the love of the community and the faithful that binds us together holds us together. It's not a love that's just manifested on earth, but it's a love that we have inherited because of our belief in Jesus as the ultimate definition of love. And so when we all imitate Jesus, we extend the love that has come from beyond, from a sacred place, to share that faithfully with each other. So the thing is, we need prayers. And we need the connection of the community built upon a spirit of love. And then we need to remind ourselves of the deliberate presence of God. Oh, yeah. And this is why the psalmist writes these words in 139th Psalm, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol in hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there 
Your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day for darkness is as light to you. You see, it's to remember, remember the faithfulness of God. Remember, it is God that helps us come through what we need to come through. When I look at the powerlessness of my own life, I, I, I look to the power of God. I look to the hills where my help comes from. I look to the power of God to bring me, you, us through. You see, you, we come to that place in our brokenness that we realize just who God is and what God has provided as a gift for the people of God. And that gift can be something as simple as somebody just praying for you, somebody just holding your hand, somebody just loving you in spite of yourself, somebody just caring for you, even sometimes when you're just evil and cantankerous and you're dealing with all the stuff you deal with. You know how we get sometimes. <laughs> Saying we don't want to hear it. I'm not interested in that. I don't believe. Well, I'm going to sit here anyway. Why? Because I'm tapped into a love that's beyond. If you notice in Paul's words, Paul's saying, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the chains. I'm not ashamed of what I'm going through. I'm not ashamed of any of those things because God is in charge. And I got news for us today. I'm not worried in the least about this crazy schizophrenic politics that's going on. I'm not worried in the least about some fool who thinks that he got some power. And when he thinks he got some power, that's simply because he don't know yet what I know. And what I know is that he has no power in comparison to the one who bestows power and the one who can take it away. And, 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 and see, this is what I do know. I do know that you can pass all kinds of policies that I got to deal with, that I don't agree with, that, that brutalizes people and so forth and so on. And yes, we got to go through what we got to go through, but you better hold on for God is still on the throne and God is still sitting high and looking low and God will break through any kind of injustice with God's plan of justice and God's plan of love. That doesn't mean I don't have to do anything come 2020. We all got to do something come 2020. Maybe, 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 maybe God put us here so that we realize with a different kind of gravity of just what we've taken for granted over and over again. You know, because we always talk about, oh, y'all know people died trying to vote and then we don't vote. Y'all know that people... Uh, made a sacrifice trying to open this door and, get, and then we don't care. So God brought us to this place where we got to go through what we got to go through in order to take God at his word and to believe in his truth and to understand that God has reminded us not to be ashamed of his gospel. Not to be ashamed of his truth. Not to be ashamed of building community. Not to be ashamed of loving one another. Not to be ashamed. And to trust that God is a breakthrough God. A breakout God. A God who can change things. You see, I, I, I give thanks today for Deacon Kelly for every day I can stand. See, I, I, I wasn't like that last year. Took it for granted. I thank God for every day I can talk. And I thank God for you. Because Plymouth, I don't know if y'all know this. I don't know if y'all really know this. But Plymouth is a community of profound love. Do y'all know that? Some people take that for granted. Plymouth is a community of profound love. 
And the reason I say that because when somebody's in need, even before I see a word go out about it from anybody, somebody knows about them, and folk are responding to it, and folk are surrounding folk, and folk are praying for folk, and folk are loving folk, and folk are trying to help folk, bring them through, bring them over. However, God has put a special burden upon us to be God's bearers of good news and light in this world. And so Paul was saying, I'm going to go through what I have to go through. But I know who's able. I know who's able to deliver me, to bless me. I know who's able to provide the job that I want. I know who's able to carry me through the difficult and uncertain circumstance. I'm just going to put my trust in him and carry on and press on and push through and do what I need to do in order to get there and allow God to do the rest. We got to go through what we got to go through, but go through it in faith. Go through it in trust. Go through it in victory. Go through it in hope. Go through it in praise. Go through it shouting the victory shout. Go through it giving God the glory all the way. Go through it even at your low point, give God some praise. Even at the midpoint, give God some praise. At the height, give God some praise. But give God some praise no matter what is going on. As my great aunt used to tell me, said, you praise God in the sunshine and in the rain. And in fact, I'm going to praise God a little bit more. She told me in the rain than you do in the sunshine because you're going to trust that God is able to evaporate the clouds and dry up the rain and bring us through to the sun. Give God some praise as you go through what you're called to go through. The doors of the church are open and I pray somebody here today may have heard a word. Somebody here today may know what I'm talking about. Somebody here today I want to invite forth to embrace this gospel of love, this gospel of embrace, this gospel that reminds us that we are each other's keepers. We are each other's sisters and brothers. If you want to make a declaration to make Plymouth as your church home, I invite you to do do so. Uh, If you want to come forth and become a part of this community of believers, I invite you to do exactly that as we join together and sing our hymn. What is it? 375. Let us join in that hymn. Let's stand and join in that.
us take all the things that we face in life. This table reminds us of our own humanity and yet of our relationship with God. So at this table, there's brokenness and betrayal at this table. The stuff that we have to go through at this table. But then also there is the promise of God oh, yeah. that uh, illuminates itself over this table. And we find out that God is the true breakthrough and the true overcomer. So we'll have a prayer for the bread and a prayer for the cup at this time as we prepare for communion. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this, your Lord's table. Just thank you that this invitation to all those who love you and serve you, oh God. And we just lift up this bread who represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that loved us so much that he would go to the cross and we can have life and have life more abundantly. We also lift up this cup, the sign of the new covenant poured out for men for the forgiveness of sins. We ask, oh God, that all those who take and eat of this bread, all those who take and drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of Jesus our Christ, the one who loves us, saves us, and redeems us. Tonight, when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, sitting with his disciples, he took bread, blessed it, broken and blessed it, giving it to his disciples. He said, Take and eat, for this is my body.
to stand for our closing hymn and as we receive our closing hymn I shall lift up our benediction as we go through what we go through go through it in faith as we go through what we go through go through it in prayer As we go through what we go through, let the love of others touch us and we touch others with our love. Let the Spirit of God surround us and fill us, engulf us, and carry us forth. To share some good news with somebody that they ask, yes, yes, you may go through some stuff and you are going to go through some stuff. But I'm here to remind you that God is still in charge and God is victorious over all that may beset us. We go forth in that spirit, we give God the praise, and we pray in the name of the Creator and the Son, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and the people of God said amen, amen, and amen.